Hello and welcome. This is a captain on Excel with Amaka Ifebnando, the Excel coach. And in today's training, I'll be showing you how to design account receivables in Excel. Account receivable is the same thing as debtors. Debtors are people you sell on credit and they pay in a future date. So they don't pay right there. You sell to them on credit and in a future date, they promise to pay or based on the agreement. So it is quite important you keep track of the patterns in your business, these customers in your business, because if you don't, you may be losing a lot of money. So in this training, this is what I'll be showing you how to analyze account receivables or debtors in Excel. So this is what we're going to be designing. We have our customer's report. By the end of this training, you should be, we, we will be able to have this report that generates automatically. So you have the amount each of the customers is owing, the payment they've made thus far, and their balance. So at a glance, you know who to follow up and uh, you know how much that each of these customers is owing your business, right? So and this also serves as um, uh, a database for customers. So if you have your customer, you just input the customer here and it will automatically update in this transaction details and the payment details section, right? So in the transaction details, I'll also be showing you how we get this. And this two column has formulas, the dates, days owing and the aging group. So it's important, you know, the number of dates the person is owing plus far from the date of the transaction, then what group are you grouping them? Because if the person has exceeded 60 days, the person may fall between the 60, 61 to 90 days. And if the person that is owing, the customer that is owing has exceeded 90 days, so you'll be above 90. So it gives you an idea of, okay, this person is owing for a long period of time. You follow up to know why the person is owing, ensure that the person pay as at when you. And it will also inform you on whether to issue credit to this person, this customer, or not, and also show you how the slicer can be used to be able to analyze for each of the customers and the amounts they are owing. So in the payment section, too, we'll have the details of the customers and the payments they have made. So for each of the invoices, for each of the invoice amount, because one customer might have, you might have sold to the customer like twice. So for each the invoice is unique for each sales there is a unique invoice so with the invoice number you know the transaction that uh, you've made to a customer so for a customer let's say for customer 01 you might have made three transactions so each of those transactions can be tracked based on the invoice number the uniqueness of the invoice number helps you track the transaction made to that customer so when you're making payment you pick up customer 01 with the invoice number how much is the person paying? So if the person is owing 50,000 based on invoice 001, so if a person pays 35,000, it tells you 5,000 is remaining based on that invoice. So you can be able to track, right? To track the invoice amount and the payment made thus far. And you can give the customer the report where there are discrepancies. You keep records to give the customer to so that the customer will have an understanding of the statement of my account with this vendor is and will be able to also meet up with payment assets when you. So this is what I'll be showing you how to design in this training. So without much talking, let's go right into it and let me show you how to do it. So please, I will encourage you to walk along, practice along because you understand better when you walk along. So let's go right into the training. Good, we are here. So as here we have the customer report. And in the customer report, you here you profile your customers. This is a section you profile. If you have a good new customer, just come in here and impute the new customers. Without imputing the new customer here, you can't have the customer listed on your transaction database. You, you won't have the customer listed here because here we'll be putting uh, uh, data validation to restrict the 
user on the customers to select. So your customer base is here. So for every new customer you input here, the customer will also appear here and also appear in the payment section. So that's the first thing we'll be doing. So how do we restrict the customer input in the transaction details and the payment details? We're going to put in a list data validation. We drop down list data validation in this column and a drop down list data validation in this column. So what we do here, we'll be using the offsets because as we are imputing the customer, the data validation list will be updated. So I'll just use the formula here so that you can see how it works. Then we go in and impute it in the um, list data validation. So I'll start with the offset formula, offsets. So I'm starting with this cell B2, so that's the row, the reference. And I don't want it to move. I don't want any rows to move. I don't want it to move to any columns. Then the height, I'll use the counter for the height. What am I using the counter? I want Excel to just list the cell that has items in it. For those that are blank, it should not bring it up. So I and the, the range I'll be selecting determines the number of customer I want this template to have, right? So now I have the counter, so I will just select from here to 20. So I just need like um, from this cell, let's make it to 20, 20. So to 22, I want 20 customers. So this uh, this uh, uh, template, this account receivable templates will only accommodate 20 customers part time. So uh, after I have done this, I'll just lock the cell and um, close this then the height i don't need the i don't need the width i'm okay with the width so it's not really compulsory so i can just close it and there we go so you see it spills over so it's showing me that i have so if i put another customer let me see see because the customers will be unique let's say it's customer so if you can see what happens so this is what i'll be using to create my data validation so i mean just copy copy the formula Good. And I can just delete this space over. So I go to the transaction details. Now I want to impute my data validation in here. My database should stop at 30. I'm okay at 30. So you come to your data tab, then go to data validation. Click on it. And here we go. You click on lists. And I will input the formula V. Now I'll have to work on this formula because. This formula is referencing items on customer reports sheet. So what I will do is I will just, I mean, just click on this B3 and go to customer report sheet, select this cell, all right? Good, then you come here, counter, so that you can reference the sheet I'm referring to, and you click on this. So 22, good. So this is what I want. So I will just do away with this. So watch my formula very well and ensure that it's okay. Good. So you can see that. You can see that this is it. This is it. So you can see. You can see for yourself. So I'll repeat this. What I'll just do, not to stress a lot, after getting this formula here, I go back to this. I just copy this. And I go to the payment details, I repeat the same thing. So let me say my payment details to this point. I can just impute the data validation, data validation list. Remember it's list, then you just impute your offset and there we go. We are referencing the same cell. Good. So we have that. And that's the first thing we need to do. Right. So we have our data validation. Good to go. And our data set is ready. So the next thing we'll do is this. For the days owing, you see, for each transaction date, we have a unique invoice number. Then which customer are you selling to? Then the amount. So you impute the date, the invoice number. You don't repeat an invoice number for two different transactions. You don't have the same invoice number for two different transactions. So for each transaction, there is a specific invoice number because when a customer comes to buy an item from you or list of items, you raise an invoice. Customer 01 comes today, you raise invoice 001. 
He comes after three days to buy another set on credit. You rate a unique invoice. So for each transaction, you need to have a unique invoice number. So have that in mind. So you use this to select your customer, the drop down list. You know how we created it, then the amount. Now, the days owing. How do we go about the days owing? Remember, there is a training I did. Sometimes back, I, I will drop the link here, um, in this video for you to watch that training on dated if. Dated if is not profiled in Excel, but it's a very unique formula you can use to know the number of days from two, between two days, right? Just to know the number of day, maybe the number of months, the number of year that is between two days, two dates, right? So we'll be using that dated if in this, in this cell. So you see equals to dated if so you see it's not popping up <laughs> so i'll just say today i'm using this date here i want to use this date first then today's date by using today's functions today's function right then what do i want it to return i want it to return the day d re represent d is day m is month and why is it so i want it this dated if to return the number of days between the day i made the transaction to the customer and today's date so if you open this template tomorrow it will give you the number of days the customer is owing so i'll close this good and there we go so it's telling me 100 days so you can see 100 days from the day i made the sales to the customer today so i will drag it because i need this day to be able to work on this on this aging group so you see with the dated if i have the number of days that this transaction was made and this to, to today so based on the day you made the transaction and today or the whichever day you you're working on this template it can give you the number of days this customer is going, which is quite important for you to know and be able to track the customers, right? So there's something again I want you to know. If we delete this, or let me say, if this is not here, you notice that it gives us a number, like, like you know, for each cell there is a date by standard. So what I would, what we'll do is this. I'll say Control Z. We'll just say if the cell is blank, is blank. Let's use the is blank formula. Is this cell blank? So we are saying, is this cell blank? If this is blank, so I'll say, if is blank, so if this A4 is blank, which is, is given me true, if it is given me true, right, what I'll do is that I'll tell Excel to return empty for me. But if it is not empty, then it should return this particular formula. Right, so I can now close this. So what it does is if I if this is empty, you see this will be empty. So this is the essence of it. So if, if the date column is empty, it will return empty. But if it has a date, it will calculate the number of days owing. Right. So let's go to the next column, which is the aging group. That's to group your aging. Now there's something we call aging in accounting or finance. You know, aging is all about grouping the customers that are owing you in different groups. So if the person uh, is owing you for a period of let's say uh, zero to thirty days, you, you you group the person in the zero to thirty days group. So as you can see, this is the key to aging I have here. So for customers that are owing less than or equal to thirty days, we we'll put them in this group. Those that are owing greater than 30 days and less than or equal to 60 days, we put them in this group. So greater than 60 days and less than or equal to 90 days, we'll have them in this group. Then greater than 90 days, we'll have them in this group. So this is what we'll be doing in this column. And we'll be using the ifs and the and function all together. So we'll start with the ifs. You can use the, I'm using uh, the ifs function or you nested if. You can use nested if if you don't have the ifs function. So I'll be using the ifs, which is quite easy for me. I can input a lot of arguments. So the logical test is if the cell is less than or equal to 30, right? Or say if it is less than or equal to 30, select this, right? And make it absolute, right? So what's the next test? The next test is it has to be greater than 30 days 
or less than or equal to 60 days. So I'll be using the and for sure because I'm testing two, two logical for um two logic, and those two logic has to be true for it to return what I want it to return. So the first one is has to be if for where we have the, the number is greater than 30, right? It has to be greater than 30, and if for is less than or equal to 60, right? So it's either greater than 30 or less than or equal to 60, then it gives you the sum. Then you put it, make it absolute, good. Then the next one is, it has to be greater than 60 and it will be less than or equal to 90. So if for is greater than 60, right? So the second one, no, we have to put an and, an and, yes. So it has to be and. Logical test. This is our logical test. Okay. I think I missed it. So, okay. So this is, and if 4 is greater than 30, if 4 is less than or equal to 60. So this is the logical test. So if the logic is there, what should, what should it return if it is true? So we are using this uh, intelligence as a guide. So it should return this if it's true, and I'll make it absolute good. So I, I was missing it there. So the AND function, again, we want to test if 4 is greater than 60. First, I'll also say if 4. You can select the if 4 or you type the if 4. If 4 is less than or equal to 90. All right. It's the second logical test. So, and, so what's the value? If it is true, it should return the 61 to 90 days. So, I'll make it absolute. Then the last test we are testing is, if 4 is greater than, I can type if 4, you press it, if 4 is greater than 90 days, if 4 is greater, so that just we just have only one test for that final logical test. If 4 is greater than 90, if, if 4 is greater than 90, what should it return above 90? So I'll make it absolute and I'll close the bracket and enter. So you see, because this is 100, it is above 90, so it gives you above 90. So I'll just use and fill, and fill the formula down so you can see. So now we are good to go, right? So we are good to go. So we are referring to the cell if it is greater than, if it is less than. So the next thing is this. If this cell, because what we are testing, if this cell is empty, let's see, this cell is empty. Let me delete it again. Let's see what will happen. Mm. It's giving us above 90 days. Let me also delete the cell. It's giving me above 90 days. So what I'll do is this. I will now say, if we'll now put the first, the first one should be if e4. If let's say e4, make it e4. If e4 is equal to empty, if it is an empty cell, just return empty. So let's put that logical test and see how it goes. So if this e4 is empty, definitely if this one is empty, e4, good. So this is this works perfectly. So just fill this down. Words. So if E4 is empty, because we will delete this, E4 will definitely be empty. Wow, something is wrong. Oh, I didn't fill this formula down. That's the reason. Good to go. So if we delete this one, good. So you can see for yourself. Good. So that's it. That's it. So we are good to go here. So we can just impute this inside the table by Ctrl T. You can press Ctrl T or you go to insert and insert in a table. So I can just take Ctrl T and I'll say, yes, my table has headers. And there you go. So you can change the design to suit your preference, right? So you can just change the design. Let me use this for the training to differentiate it. So this is okay. So here we go. So as you impute, the formulas will be filling themselves. And that's one of the uniqueness of working with an Excel table. So we are done with the transaction details section. Let's go to the payment details section, which is quite um, not that much. So here we have the date of payment. Then who is paying the customer? So 
what you do is this we imputed uh, a slicer here and the essence of that slicer is for you to know okay for this customer that is want to pay how many invoice how many sales have i made to this person what invoice am i applying the sales to because you may have a customer you have made sales to credit sales to like three times and the customer is yet to clear even the first one and that is not a good practice though but this training we are just sticking to how to analyze the credit sales or account receivables our debtors or account receivables so we'll insert the slider so when you select the table there's something unique about the table excel table excel table gives you the, the table design pops up and you have different features you can work around it but before we go ahead let's give this table a name so you can see that the name is saying table one table one so we'll just give it a descriptive name we'll just call it transaction detail let's say transaction let's call it transaction just call it transaction the other one will be payment good so it's okay so we can now insert slicer still on the table design tab you'll notice the slicer option here on that tools so i can just click on slicer so i want to insert slicer based on customer code so i'll check the customer code and yes slicer helps you to filter so i have the slicer here i can change the color you see the slicer um, tab automatically pops up immediately you select the slicer if i deselect it there's no slicer tab. If you select the table, you have the table design tab. If you if you go out of the table, you don't have that table. So that's one uniqueness with this tool. So if I select the slicer now, I have the slicer tab. So immediately I click the tab, notice the style, slicer styles. So I'll just click on a good style. I love the green. So you can choose whichever one that suits your preference is okay. So you can see all your customer, your unique customer are listed here. So if I click on customer one, you see, tell me customer one, we have made sales, two sales transaction, invoice 001 and invoice 018. So with this, you will know if customer one wants to pay and if the customer one is bringing 40,000 or let's say 35,000, mind you, the first invoice is 30, the second invoice is 11. So you know how to, in this payment section, let me just clear this. So that every customer will be showing in the payment section and just to state that you clear the filter this is more like um the slider does filter does the work of filter but it gives it to you handy so you can just come here click based on customer code i want to filter based on customer code so the slider gives you the 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 access easily to filter your database based on customer code so let's go to our payment section so work on the payment section for the balance we want to ensure that for every amount that the customer is paying we apply it to a particular invoice and after the payment we apply the payment we want to know the balance after we apply that particular payment to that invoice like for invoice customers 001 made a payment of 25,000 in the first or the 25th, right? So we know for invoice 001, how much is he owing? For invoice 001, it's owing 30,000. So 25,000, if he pays 25,000, there's a balance of 5,000, right? What I'll do here is to use the sum if function. The sum if function is to sum the transaction the person is owing, you understand, and what the person has paid. So what is the person owing based on that on this particular invoice? What, how, what amount is the customer owing? And what payment has the person made thus far on this particular invoice? And what is the balance? So that's the idea of the formula we'll be using here. So I'll just say the sum is, so watch me closely. Good. So I want to sum all the amounts this particular customer is owing based on this invoice. And mind you, the details are in this transaction. And I have a table I have given a name. So I'll call up the table's name, transaction. The table name is called transaction. So I want to sum which range, the amount range, right? So this is the uniqueness of Excel table. If you are working with Excel table, there's some things we call structural references. So you have access to all the data details in that uh, table when you call up the table while writing the formula right so this is the sum range now what is the criteria range the criteria we are looking at for is basically the invoice amount because the invoices are unique 
the invoice are unique. There is no two invoices you can have in on our database or for two different customers. If each invoice for each transaction. So it's the invoice we are going to be using. So we say transaction table. So what's our criteria range? Our criteria range is the invoice number. All right. So we close the brackets. All right. So what's our criteria? Our criteria is the C. Right. So I close it. So I want to minus, when it sums this, it should minus it from the payment, sum ifs. It should minus it from the payment. And this is the range. What's the range? This is the range, the amount range. I'll put this range here and I'll make this absolute F4 because this, this cell will still be increasing. I'll be adding more cells to it. So to D4, right? Then what's the criteria range? The criteria range is the invoice. So it's the C column. So it's going to be C4 to C4. So I'll still make this the first C4 absolute. Because as the cell is increasing, the first cell will still will remain constant. Right. I don't need to make the other C4 absolute. Then what's the criteria? The criteria is this particular C4. So I'll close the bracket. Good. So it's telling me that after for this customer on the 25th of June, customer 01 paid 30,000, but we applied, we called up invoice number 01, we applied 25,000. Now, if you go to your transaction details, you see that cost invoice 001, the amount is 30,000. Now, because we applied 25,000, the formula here now lists the amount saying that, okay, he has paid 25,000, the customer is still owing a balance of 5,000, right? Now, on the 30th of June, that same customer paid 5,000. So, seeing that invoice 01 is still having a balance of 5,000, we can just come and apply it to invoice 018. The customer is still owing us on invoice 018, which we made a sales on the 18th, you understand? So, so we notice that, okay, we have to apply it to the balance that is remaining. So you fulfill this formula downwards. Notice what will happen. So immediately he pays 5,000. There is no more balance. So I'll just, this is just uh, telling you that the formula opposite adjacent, you know, omits adjacent. So due to the nature of the formula, definitely will ignore this. So this is it. So for customer 05, let's go to transaction details. Let's click on customer 05. So customer 05, invoice 03 and invoice 017. Customer 05. So on 003, 120,000. So you notice that 003, this customer pays 50,000. So the balance is 70. All right. Because it's 120. So 50, if you add 70, it's definitely 120. So it applied 50,000 to the amount it's doing and telling us the balance for this customer is 70. So when the customer wants to pay again, you just go to your transaction details. Okay, 120, right? So you understand, there you will now go. So we are still moving on on this. We'll still come to the report where we'll have a glimpse of what the person, the balance the person is or you're not minding the invoice number. So what this gives you is like more of a detailed analysis because for one customer, you can sell three transactions at three different times and this person you're selling on credit. So when the person start paying, the person may not pay all at a time. The person may pay in bits. So you tell the person on this date, I sell based on this invoice number, we sell 30,000 to you. So you pay 25. So you are still owing on that for the, the next transaction you have not started paying so that's the essence of this so let me just let's just insert this in an excel table control c yes by table has header so that it auto up updates automatically then we use we still use this so just for we just ignore this due to the nature of the formula we are using so we, that is why so but it's it's okay so you, we have this ready so we can just name this our payment. Let's payment. So we'll now impute our slicer. So we can impute our slicer, and our slicer is based on 
customer so that we know the customer good so we can have this i believe our 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 slicers for payment is based on customer let's check the example we are using yes payment is based on customer good so we now have a subtotal here i need to put the subtotal here for time to know how much that has been paid so we have we just want to get the subtotal for this particular okay i want to select this and um here we go good so one thirty thousand payment made us far the same thing will come here i will impute let me clear clear this you put the subtotal subtotal the sum amount of the subtotal you can call up the table and their amount column so we can just close the bracket and there we go so it's giving us this total amount that credit customers are owing our business so you can know the total amount they are owing and you can also know the balance they are owing so i can change this color the slicer color to green and there we go so the next thing is our customer report so this is quite summary report that gives us at a glance not minding the number of invoices that you have sold to a particular customer it doesn't put that it just calculates all the amount the customer is owing the payment made and the balance so this will give you a better summary report then from this you can now go into details to drill down and okay for this particular customer that is owing me this particular amount based on the balance i'm seeing here you go there dig out dig out the customer dig out the payments and you can follow up so we just do the summary report quite easy so for the amount owing we get the details from our transaction details and for the payments we get the detail from the payment details section so i will be going in there with the table i've inserted and given name on this and also inserted table to my database and given the table a name it's quite easy for me to just prepare my reports so i'll still be using the sum ifs the sum ifs so we'll call up our transaction table then what are we summing what's the range is the amount we are summing All right good so what's the criteria range all right that's the problem what's the criteria range the criteria range is the customer we'll call up the table again the criteria range is a customer code so you select the customer code and close the bracket then what is the criteria the criteria is this all right the customer code then you close the bracket and enter so you see for customer 01 this is the amount is owing all right so there we go so customer 12, we have it's not owing anything, it's just a new customer, right? <laughs> so let's also get the payment equals to some ifs. Some ifs. So the payment will call for the payment table. And what's the amount? That's the amount we are summing. Then what's the criteria range? Transaction. Transaction criteria range is the customer code too. And um, was the criteria basically this? And we close the bracket, and there we go. So something is wrong. Amount transaction. Oh my God! So we have payment, and we are also referencing transaction. So this is the reason. So we have to use we have, is the payment sheets we are working with. So there we go. Good. So we fill in downwards. So here we have our balance, which is this minus this, right? So there we go. So this gives you at a glance. This gives you at a glance. So with a new customer, here, as I said earlier, we profile our customer. If you have a new customer, you have to impute the customer here so that I can be able to select it. So let's go down and say, okay, on the 3rd of, 3rd of August, 2023, um invoice let's see inv inv uh zero two one so we have customer 12 so customer 12 
So now we sold, uh, let's say, for 35,000 Naira. So uh, what we have in value here, the formatting of the dates is not yet. It's wrong. Okay, the date formatting is wrong. Good. So the date formatting is wrong. That was why we had that. So you can see. Immediately you come to the customer report, immediately you have that 35,000. So at a glance, you see the balances, each customer is in your business. And from there, you can just go to the transaction details to drill down on those customers, right? You can go to the transaction details to drill down on those customers to know or what they are owing, like customer 12, you know, it's 35,000. So you go to payments and... Um, Customer 12 has not made any payment. So payment is based on, your input here is based on the payment that is made. All right. So this person has not made any payment. So you click on customer 2. Customer 2 is, has two invoices and this is the amount, 44, 670. So payment, customer 2 has not made any payment. So this is how you go about analyzing your customers' uh, account receivables, also known as debtors in Excel. So I believe this, uh, as uh, we've gotten this, and it's going to serve as an important tool for you in business, for you as a career person that manages the finance of an organization. This will serve as a good tool for you to analyze your account receivables, also known as debtors, customers that are owing your business, so that you'll be able to track them, follow them up to ensure that payment is made as at when due, and you won't lose money thank you very much for staying true to the end of this training if you got value from this training please do what to like this video hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell to get notified whenever i upload value tip on this channel and do what to share with as many that you know that will benefit from this training thank you and see you in the next training bye for now